Shopify gives you all of the tools necessary to build and operate an online store complete with automated checkout and shipping tools. Today we will go through the process of building and launching a Shopify web store. To begin the process, head to shopify.com and click on the purple get started button in the upper right hand corner of the page. This will start the sign up process of your 14 day free trial. The site starts the process by asking a couple of questions about what you're selling. This is a new endeavor for me, so I will select I'm not selling any products yet. For revenue, I will choose zero as I'm just getting started. And if you're setting up a store for someone else, check that yes, you will be developing the store for a client. After you made your selections, click next. Now you'll enter your primary contact information to include your name, address, phone number, and your website if you have one already. After entering this information, click on enter my store. You're now at your shop's primary dashboard. This is where you will set up and design your store. At this point, your store's website is already live with a myshopify.com subdomain name. However, everything is undefined and now you will need to go through and set up your items and your store. You can start by customizing your store's theme. On the homepage, click on the customize theme tab in the center of your screen and then the purple customize theme button. You're now at the themes page. Here you can customize your current theme, look for free themes, buy themes from Shopify theme store, or upload a Shopify compatible theme. The default theme chosen by Shopify is the debut theme. While it's okay, I wanted to try something else, but I don't want to spend money. Let's click on explore free themes to try out a new theme. As you scroll down, you will see that 10 free themes are offered. A small green live button is on the debut theme to signify our current theme. I like the look of the simple theme, so let's try that. Click on the theme to get a brief overview of the theme. This one has two styles. Click on the radio button for beauty to check out that design. I like this theme, so I will click on the add simple button to add the theme to my website. We're now back to our themes page and under more themes, you will see the simple theme. Click the actions drop down menu to look at the options available. I want to replace my current theme, so I'll click publish. This brings up a screen verifying that I want to replace my current theme. I do, so I will click publish. The simple theme is now active and you can preview it by going to actions and clicking preview. It's now time to customize the theme, so click on the customize button. From here, you can edit how your website theme looks and add sections to your website. Take the time to familiarize yourself with the features of the theme and set up your photos, logo, add text, and any additional features such as your blog. Now we get to some of the fun stuff and that starts by adding your products to your page. At the main home page, the add product section should already be active. Click on the add product button to get started. In this section, you will add a product that you want to sell on your website. Start by giving the product a title. Avoid using overly generic terms like a short sleeve t-shirt and use more descriptive terms such as a Grateful Dead farewell tour t-shirt. After giving the item a title, you will enter a description of your product. Again, this should be as descriptive as possible. If you can work in unique keywords that customers will search for online, even better. Next, let's add some pictures. Actual photos of your item are best, but stock photos are fine as well. You can either click on upload image link or drop your pictures in the images section. After adding images, it's time to set your pricing. The price field is the amount you're charging for the item. If you enter the compare ad price, this will make it look like you marked your item down from a higher price. You can use this to show that your item is cheaper than another store's item. The cost per item field is part of your personal tracking to track your margin. Next, you have an inventory section. If you have multiples of an item, fill out this section. You can enter your item SKU and barcode numbers and the type of inventory policy you wish Shopify to keep. This is also where you put in how many you have in stock. If this is an item you plan to restock after running out, you can also enable the option to allow customers to purchase the item if it's out of stock. Now you can step up shipping. Check the box beside this is a physical product if it is a physical good. If shipping a physical good, you can enter in the weight of an item. Afterward, enter the HS tariff code for the item for international customs. The fulfillment service defaults to Shopify and you are unable to change this. After the shipping section, you will have a section for variants. If your item comes in different colors or sizes, this is where you'll enter those options. The final section of your item is your SEO preview. Here you will preview how your item will look on Google 
and other search engines. You can then go in and modify the page title, meta description, and URL. There are additional options you can modify on the right hand side of the page. The product availability section allows you to show this item in other parts of your website and to set a future publication date if desired. Afterward, enter in organization data for product type and vendor. If you have multiple collections set up, you can select which collections this item shows in. Lastly, you can add tags for your item. These meta tags will help your item rank better on Google and help customers find your item easier. Pick tags that your customers are likely to search for and those that make your item stand out from the competition. Now that your item is ready, go down to the bottom of the screen and click on the Save Product button. This will save your product and is now active on your website. To add additional products, head back to the home page and click on the Add Another Product button. Now that you know how to set up your products, you need to be able to get paid. Let's start by setting up your payments. At the bottom left hand corner of your screen, click on Settings. Next, choose payment providers to set up your payments. By default, your store accepts PayPal and Venmo payments via PayPal Express Checkout. If you want to accept credit card payments, you must set up either Shopify payments or set up a third party provider. To change the provider, click on the third party credit card provider option. Then from the drop down, choose the dozens of other credit card processors. For example, PayPal PayFlow Pro. To accept, click continue. Or to cancel, just click the cancel button or click the X at the top right. And if you want to add another third party provider, click on the add a provider button again. This time, let's go with Pinwheel Pay. Note that you will pay an extra 2% fee on all orders if you use a third party provider. I don't want to use a third party provider, so I'm just going to click on cancel. Now I'm back to the original payment provider screen. This takes you to a page where you will enter your business and personal details, along with your banking details. Under customer billing statement, make sure the statement descriptor accurately communicates your business's name. This is what your customers will see when they are charged. Once all of the required information is complete, click on the complete account setup button to finish. In the payment section, you can set up additional payment options. You can accept payments via Amazon Pay, or you can set up alternative payment methods such as BitPay and Dewala. You can also set up manual payment options where customers can pay via money order, COD, or bank draft. In the last section, you can set up an automatic payment capture or manual payment capture. Now that you've set up payments, it's time to set up shipping services for your store. Click on settings and select shipping to modify your shipping settings. Start by verifying your origin address. If you need to change this, click on change shipping origin link and then the manage location link to add your origin address. After verifying your address, it's time to set up your shipping zones. By default, domestic shipping is handled by the US Postal Service, while international shipping is done by both USPS and DHL. To change domestic shipping, click on the edit link in the domestic section. This takes you to a screen where you can define options for shipping in the United States. If you want to add a second country for domestic shipping, click on the add countries button and select your country. Typically, you'd use the default option here. Next, you can choose to choose price or weight based rates. Click on the add rate button and fill out the appropriate boxes. For a price based rate, you can set the minimum and maximum order price that this would apply to, the rate amount, or you can choose that this would be a free shipping rate. After defining this option, we will click done to save. If you want to add additional providers, click on the add rate button under calculated rates. Here you can select either DHL Express or UPS. I want to offer UPS to my customers, so I'm going to choose it from the drop down menu. If you only want to provide specific services from UPS, you can uncheck the boxes beside services you do not wish to provide. I don't want to offer any UPS worldwide services, so I'm going to uncheck those options. Finally, you can set up a rate adjustment to allow for packaging and handling costs. You can do this as a percentage or flat fee. After making your changes, click the done button to go back to the domestic screen. When you're done making changes, click the save button. Since we selected UPS for provider, we have to answer a couple of questions about the products we're offering and confirm we've read and agreed to Shopify's shipping terms of service. After saving your change, click the shipping link at the top of your page to go back to your shipping settings. If you wish to change shipping settings for the rest of the world, you can use these same steps as you did for domestic. 
After setting up your shipping providers, you can go through and set up options for your shipping label, default package sizes you use for shipping, packing slips, and you can add your fulfillment center's email address if applicable. If you want to use additional shipping methods such as FedEx, you will have to upgrade your plan to advanced or higher. The basic plan does not offer the ability to add additional third-party shipping providers. Now that you've set up your payments and shipping, now comes the time to set up the checkout process for your customers. Start by verifying your tax settings for your site. To check tax settings for your store, go to settings and then click taxes. From here, you can set up how your store handles taxes. Select all taxes are included in my price to have taxes automatically added to the listing price shown on your site. Select charge taxes on shipping rate to collect taxes on shipping payments. To verify the tax rate being used for your area, go down to tax rates and click on United States. The default is to calculate taxes automatically. If you wish to disable this, uncheck the box. If you have a physical presence in a state, you must charge applicable taxes there. You can find those in the county, municipal and state taxes section. If you have more than one physical location, you can add the state and zip code of the location to add the tax rate for that region. If you wish to override the amount of tax charged for a region that you have a physical location in, go to tax overrides and click to add a tax override. You can override taxes for products or shipping. Now that you've checked over taxes, it's time to set up a checkout section of your website. Go back to settings and select checkout to set up your checkout section. To change the style of the section, such as the logo, colors, and fonts, click on the customize checkout button. We're going to focus more on the nuts and bolts of this section. First select whether you want to make accounts required or optional. I want to give my customers the option to register, so I'll click on accounts are optional. Next, provide customer options for checkout. I want to provide them with options, so I'm picking to let them check out using either their phone number or email. You can also enable the option to allow customers to get shipping updates via their phone or email. I will add that option. Next, you can set up a form option. Here, I will require a first and last name, give them an option for a company name, give them an option for line two of their address, and give them an option for a shipping home phone number. Now we are at the order processing section. The default selection for while a customer is checking out is to use shipping address as the default billing address and to enable address completion. I won't change these options. In the section for after an order has been paid, I will leave that as the default and I don't want orders automatically fulfilling. Finally, you can choose whether to archive an order after it's been fulfilled and paid. The default here is fine. Next, you have an additional script section. Here you can type any additional information you wish to communicate with the customer. I will type a nice message to thank them for their order. Now that order processing is done, we can set up email marketing and abandon cart options. Under email marketing, I will leave the default to show a sign up option, but I won't pre-select it so they don't think I'm trying to trick them into signing up for my emails. Next, we can set up our abandoned checkouts. The default option is to send abandoned cart emails automatically. You can choose to send them to anyone who abandons checkout or email subscribers only. You can also choose when to send it, anywhere from 1 hour to 24 hours after they abandon their cart. If you want to send abandoned cart emails, you can customize the email by clicking the customize email button. Personally, I don't want to fool with abandoned carts and I'm going to uncheck that option to send abandoned cart emails. Finally, if you want to change your store's checkout, you can do so by clicking on manage checkout language. At this point, you've set up your products and done everything necessary to bring your store online. Unfortunately, you're not quite done. You cannot accept orders through your shop until you sign up for a Shopify plan. Start by clicking on the orders link on the menu at the home page. We're now at the orders page and we must select a paid plan to continue. Take a moment to review the terms of each plan that includes credit card and in-person fees, number of staff accounts, your shipping discount, and Shopify retail information. Once you've decided on the plan, click on the choose this plan button. We will select the Shopify basic plan. Now that you have signed up for a plan, your site is now online and ready to take orders. Shopify gives you all the tools you need to set up an online store, accept payments, and even ship your products to your customers. To learn more about Shopify, head over to Website Planet to read their comprehensive review that includes actual user reviews of the product.